thank you so much for uh, for your time. And uh, I guess I'm going to begin this little presentation I have prepared. Um, welcome. Uh, my name is John Scherzai. I am the permit associate for the uh, New York State Battery Park City Authority. Um, on the phone right here, I have the director of events coordination and management, uh, Nydia Blake. And uh, uh, Nydia, you want to say hello? No, I just said hi. It's all right. All right, great. Um, and yes, um, we are here to present a, uh, a new project in collaboration with the Williamsburg High School of Architecture and Design. And uh, we've been in, it's been a few weeks, uh, we've been in discussions with uh, Codio and Wilson. And uh, it looks like this thing is finally approved by the DOE and we're, we're ready to go. And uh, I just wanted to, to set up this meeting so we can all introduce each other, get to know each other, and um, hopefully I can provide some extra details on what this collaboration is and uh, answer any questions you all may have. Um, to begin, uh, I wanted to say a little bit about who we are as an organization. Uh, as you can see in this image right here, this is basically a rough estimation of the park area. Uh, I don't know how many of you I've been to Battery Park City. It's a it's a very popular spot, very good looking spot. Um, but yeah, uh, established in 1968, the Battery Park City Authority was charged with developing and maintaining a well-balanced community on the Lower West Side of Manhattan in place of where deteriorating piers once stood in the Hudson River. Uh, the Battery Park City Authority is a New York State Public Benefit Corporation whose mission is to plan, create, coordinate, and sustain a balanced community commercial, residential, retail, and park space within its designated 92-acre site on the Lower West Side of Manhattan. And there is recognition that as development of new parcels is completed, the importance of maintenance within the mission will become more significant. And that's just basically to say that uh, the Battery Park City Authority is a, a unique kind of uh, state agency where it's not like a normal agency like DOE or Department of Health or Department of Buildings. Uh, the way that the Battery Park City Authority operates is that uh, we basically have the um, kind of like the rights and to the, the, the operations of an agency, but we are organized as a corporation. And the, um, the, the Battery Park City Authority is completely sustained and funded by the the um, the lease deals and the uh, the money made from the, the skyscrapers and buildings and events on site. Uh, we don't have any funding from the state uh, state legislature. Uh, all of our funding is internal. Uh, we actually provide a lot of money to the uh, the city and state because uh, we make more than we uh, truly need to operate. And um, I don't know how many of you have been to Battery Park, but here are just some images of some of the park spaces. Um, uh, right here, I don't know if you can see my cursor. Uh, this is this photo does not do Rockefeller Park justice, but uh, Rockefeller Park is one of our biggest park locations on site. Um, here you can see an image of the uh, Brookfield Place, uh, a very popular shopping mall and uh, tourist attraction. Uh, uh, here on the right we have uh, Wagner Park, which is all the way in the south end of Battery Park, and uh, here we have Esplanade Plaza and another photo of. Um, of the, the area near Wagner Park. Um, so you might be asking yourselves, uh, why are you all here? Uh, why did I decide to set up this meeting in the first place? Uh, what do we need from you? And uh, this is basically why uh, I called you on and I, uh, I decided to start this project. Uh, here you can see a snippet of one of the layouts we have on file. Uh, whoops. This is one of the areas in um, Rockefeller Park, and as you can see, there's a lot of like uh, cities and the the buildings and the streets on the right. And if you look really closely at the park space, you can see it is almost completely sparse. There are hardly any details. To, if you look in this map, and you would have no idea what the park space really looks like. You wouldn't have any idea of uh, of what kind of you know trees or benches or signs or or anything is in the park and uh, what Nitty and I do specifically is that we work in events coordination so what we do is that a lot of uh, say film companies or 
corporations or nonprofits, they come to us and they request uh, use of the park space. So they submit uh, permit applications and we work very closely with these organizations to, to effectively plan um, their, their events. Um, we have a very unique role because not only are we trying to balance the needs of our applicants, but uh, Battery Park is also a residential space. So the, um, the residents of Battery Park are, uh, are trusting in us that we protect their interests. So that means that, you know, streets aren't blocked with boxes or fences and that, you know, there's no loud noise in uh, early in the morning or late at night or um, anything that can disturb quality of life in Battery Park City. And in order to effectively do that, uh, we need to work with these permit applicants and make sure that we know all the details of their events, that we know exactly where certain pieces of equipment are going in the park space because, you know, we have a lot of tourists, we have a lot of people visiting the park, and um, everyone deserves to have a positive experience, both the permit applicants and the uh, the normal people who just come to the park on a, on a whim. And... Um, we felt that uh, these drawings that we have currently in existence uh, don't do the park justice and they are not helpful for our applicants. So um, I was charged uh, with deciding how we can improve these, uh, how we can make drawings that can effectively communicate where uh, areas of concern are, where you know details and measurements are, and we can effectively uh, plan and coordinate these events. So that comes to you, uh, why Wasad? And as you can see here, uh, I have uh, this little certification. I had these drawings and uh, surprise, surprise, uh, I was once one of you. Uh, I graduated from Wasad in 2016 and uh, I've had a long journey since then. Uh, <laughs> I originally left high school thinking I was gonna be a civil engineer and I ended up in a state agency. So, you know, I guess that's life, right? And when I was thinking to myself, you know, how do we decide to, to create these new drawings? I knew that there were a lot of architecture firms and companies that did this kind of thing, that do surveys and stuff. And, you know, I knew that would have been ridiculously expensive. And I was looking at these drawings specifically, and I was thinking to myself, like, damn, Cody O taught me all this stuff. I can, I can do this. If you just give me the measurements, I can give me a couple of afternoons. I can easily do it myself. I'm sure I remember most of AutoCAD. I probably don't. But um, uh, I, I quickly realized that uh, 92 acres is a lot of space. And um, I could not do that myself. And I was thinking to myself, like, hey, well, hang on. There are a lot of other students probably in Wasad right now doing exactly what I did all those years ago. And um, I pitched the idea to Nydia. I thought, see if she was interested in it, if she wanted to take this risk. And um, after a, a few meetings with uh, other management officials and, you know, getting approval from a bunch of other people, um, we finally got uh, the approval to approach Kodio and Wasad with our idea see if they're at all interested. And uh, fortunately, it seems like uh, Cody is really excited about this. And uh, we both think that this would be a great opportunity for, for all of you to, to really get some professional experience in developing CAD drawings. Um, I personally know how important that kind of experience is to not only yourself, but to have on a resume and to have on file and to, to potentially tell like future colleges and future employers that hey, I worked on uh, developing CAD layouts for the state agency, look at me. And um, I think it would be very helpful for all of you. And uh, I hope you see that. Uh, just the basic details of what uh, our proposal is. Um, I asked Codio to, to gather the students he felt were uh, the best to, uh, to make these drawings for us. And so I understand that that's all of you. Um, uh, speaking to Ms. Wilson briefly, uh, it seems that the DOE has already approved a total of 80 paid hours for all of you um, for this project. Um, there are rumors that it might go up, but that's not confirmed. I need to confirm that with her and uh, we'll see. Um, 
the BPCA is acting as the host organization, uh, which means, from what I understand, that officially you will all be hired by the DOE, but the DOE is kind of sending you along to us. And uh, we're hosting this project, we're hosting this internship, and uh, you know, the, DV, the DOE is basically the liaison between uh, us and you. And uh, basically, we will be the ones, you know, leading the project and kind of directing you guys and how things should go. Uh, it looks like the timesheets and all that will be handled by DOE systems as well. And that is something I need to, to button up with Miss Wilson. Uh, she said that she would uh, send me that soon. So hopefully that'll be uh, ironed out and we can get that all ready. Um, the original idea I had for this project was that uh, you guys would come to Battery Park City and measure these sites because I thought this would be this is an important part of the you know the layout creation process you know like actually surveying the sites, but unfortunately due to, to COVID regulations and the city's attitude around it that isn't really possible anymore. Um, so Cody, Cody and I spoke and we decided it would probably be better if just some staff members from Wasad come over on site do all the measurements and provide you all with the details for you to, to create these drawings with. Um, you know, I would have loved you guys to come on site and to, to measure everything and, you know, have that whole experience. But uh, unfortunately, we are in the midst of a global catastrophe that uh, has inconvenienced all of our lives. But uh, I hope we all make the, the most of what we have right now. And, uh, you know, I still think this will be a great experience for all of you. And um, yeah, so once uh, once you have all those drawings and all those measurements, and uh, we uh, were Cody and I were talking, and we're probably gonna do something where we meet once a week. Uh, hopefully, Zoom will be, you know, working properly by then. Um, but we meet once a week, and you guys will just present your your progress and ask any questions, and we would provide some feedback. Oh, this should be changed. Oh, we like this a little bit better. Maybe you should change that. Um, and uh, hopefully that after a few weeks, we'll have uh, something uh, really nice that we can present to our applicants. Uh, once everything is said and done, hopefully these drawings will be uh, publicly available on our website for anyone who's interested in getting an application, uh, can just download straight off the website, or uh, we can arrange something where they can ask us and we can just send them files. Um, uh, that is determined. Um, I guess when all that's done, it's not very important. But um, yeah, uh, I know I've been rambling a lot. Um, this is just basically what we have planned so far. Um, Codio, if you want to take it from here, anything I missed? Um, can you hear me, um, John? Yep. Oh, awesome. Once again, it's amazing how time has changed. But in terms of the project scope of work, how soon can we go out to the site and start taking measurements? Like this week or early Monday? So yeah, the only thing we're waiting on on your end is the uh, that document I sent you earlier today. And really that's, that's it. Um, we have everything approved the DOE. And uh, uh, Nidia, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we need to secure approval from anyone else. So, I mean, that seems like it's uh, it's it'll be up to you and your okay. schedule. Oh, perfect. And the measuring tool, like the measuring wheel, um, to pick them up at the site. Yeah, that is something I, I will confirm with our park operations crew. Um, once I get that information to you, I'll send it to you right away. Okay. Awesome. What about the that? Say it again, Nidia. What about the identification letter? Oh, uh, I don't think Miss Wilson is on the call. I think she's the one handling it. Uh, Mr. Codio, did you hear anything from Wilson about the uh, indemnification letter from the DOE if that was still possible? She's actually working with, right now with Mr. Cornell. So oh. they're figuring out all the logistics with that in terms of getting that submitted. Uh, is that looking good? Because I remember last time we spoke, it seemed that was a hard no. Uh, is the situation changed? I'm not as of yet, so I'll get back to you. I'll let Wilson get back to you on that. I'll email her to get back All to right. you. Nidia, did you hear that? I, I don't think I don't think there would be a problem in getting the letter. Um, 
as you know, we have many schools who are submitting requests uh, for um, graduation and events uh, coming up as early as April, and all of these uh, all of these um, schools um, usually request a letter from the Board of Education. So I, I, I don't think that should be a problem. Uh, we also, just so you know, Cody, we also have um, a local school here in Better Park City um, where they did start school and they were not able to play to do physical education indoors. And so we had to open up the park, um, our parks, Wagner Park, to them. And surprisingly, um, we thought it would have been very, very difficult. And they were like in the middle of COVID when COVID was the worst. And surprisingly, the Board of Education um, responded um, to the school quickly and was able to provide a letter. Um, and so, um, you know, it is preferable that that letter be submitted before anyone, um, you know, come out to the site, um, you know, to, to do any any type of measurements. And, and, and uh, also the safety plan, although you may be coming with, you know, by yourself or maybe with someone else, um, you're still, you know, going to run into people that may be in the park, and and that is that has to do with, you know, um, protecting yourself against COVID as well. And so, you know, we would like for that to be to be in place. So, you know, um, you know, the sooner the sooner the sooner we can we can get that um, from the board of education, uh, you know, it would be it would be great. Cody, did you get all that? Yep, perfect. So I'll definitely get back with Wilson because, like you said, most of the stuff are opening up, so especially what's going on right now. So I'll definitely touch base with Wilson in the morning. All right, sounds good. And, and just so you know, it seems that the, um, uh, the state not only made it with school, but, um, um, you know, events and, and, and performing arts, um, it seems as if uh, as of March, um 22nd uh, more people are allowed together um so i don't know maybe sometime in the near future um that number will rise i mean coming this summer um they're willing to allow events for up to uh, maybe 500 people outdoors providing that precautions uh, COVID, uh precautions are are taken um so you know um hopefully in a few weeks you know, uh, that number will change and maybe something will change in the schools where, you know, maybe more schools are opening up. We hope, um, you know, that would allow uh, these students, um, you know, to maybe come visit the park um, and, and, and see for themselves how the park is, is set up. Okay, definitely. Thank you. Um, yeah, because right now, as I said it before, like the graduation, um, I was speaking to the principal in terms of setting on outdoor graduation right by our school near Domino Park. So um, it looks like everything's on the up and up. So once again, once I get in touch with Wilson to just submit the information, we get started. And on my end, I'll send over that um, PDF right away. Sure. Um, so when officially is the, is the start date for this project to begin? I would like the start date to be, um, because they go on the break next week. Um, so officially, because next week is spring break, I was thinking Monday the 5th, because by then I will be able to, to have, take measurements because we off next week for, uh, I believe, um, spring break, correct, Rodriguez? Uh, yes, Cody. Okay. Yeah. So definitely, I would like for like April fifth to be like the exact start date. Okay. All right. That that works. Mm -hmm. That works, I guess. Um. All right. So um, you know, we have but um you know i would really i i, I wanted to say um welcome to everyone uh, we're excited about this project and just a, a 
uh, in addition to um, what Jen said earlier on, we're excited about this project and, you know, we're excited um, to get started. We're, we're excited about starting a, a new relationship with you guys. Um, John spoke very highly uh, of this goal and when he mentioned um, when uh, he mentioned the idea um, to me, um, you know, I was like, uh, you know, do some research and, you know, find out what you can. Um, we had uh, other institution uh, in mind only because we are partners with the LMCC and, and some other institutions. Um, who conducts a uh, survey in better for city during the summer for us. So we had an established uh, relationship there. And so uh, in listening to, um, to the person in charge of it, um, uh, they didn't have a curriculum uh, in, in their institution um, as this one. So um, you know, we decided to pursue this through John. Again, he speaks highly of the school. And, you know, like I said, we're excited to get this started and, and we're excited, definitely excited for you guys and, you know, um, for this opportunity um, that, you know, the Board of Education is, is giving you guys. So, you know, we're excited about it and, and, and just hope that, um, you know, uh, things will get better so, uh, sooner than later and, and, you know, that you guys will be able to come out and see, um, do some sightseeing and see this beautiful park. Um, in better Park City. Um, I know that some of those cats that you send doesn't do uh, you guys any justice. I think Dean is believing. And, um, you know, our park, uh, like Rockefeller Park, you know, it starts off on DZ and DZ Street, and, uh, and the waterfront, it ends up all the way on Chambers Street, you know, just to give you an idea of how large um, that park is. Um, and 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 uh, the, so the measurements uh, for each park is going to be so so different. And uh, you know, the thing experience is the best feature. I would love it if students at one point could come out to the park just to see the makeup itself of the park. Um, you know, uh, this, this is their this, this is uh, their project, and and um, you know, see how they would approach it. So, you know, in all, we're looking forward to working with you guys. Okay, awesome. Uh, we have a question. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> oh, yeah, this is one of the questions that I mentioned earlier in terms about plans. Uh, Martina mentioned about to work off from or should we use Google Maps? So were you able to get um, some of the uh, any old plans? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I can present, I can show this right now. Um, hang on. All right, I should be sharing my screen right now. Uh, hopefully you all see it. Um, these are the plans we have in place right now. So uh, this is where I got that earlier snippet from in my presentation. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the way the original plans worked is that they kind of divided the uh, the park space into 13 sections. And each of these sections, um, as you can see right here, where is this? This is the southernmost section right here in Wagner Park. And uh, this is what we have in existence right now. Uh, there are some additional drawings that are uh, way more convoluted than this that show like gas lines, electrical lines, like tax lines, and uh, I think those are, are very helpful for you and for your for your project. Uh, so I think this is what we'll what we'll start with. Um, but as you can see, I'm just clicking on some of these random sections. Um, kind of exactly what I mentioned in my project in my presentation earlier, like this area right here. I'm showing is the area referred to as the South Cove Marina. It's a very popular spot with weddings and such, and a lot of film shoots and commercial shoots and movie shoots are also here as well. Um, but again, like if I showed you this right here, like you, you would have no idea what really the park looks like. Um, you wouldn't know that in this area specifically, there is a, uh, there's like a bench area and there's like a circle of arches and 
Like, obviously, none of that is displayed in these plans. And for some reason, they decided to focus all their effort in these and like these blocks and these buildings, but they didn't care too much about park space. And this is what we're working with at the moment. Okay, perfect. Um, so, okay, let me see. Okay. Awesome. Any more questions before I ask uh, another question pertaining to this project? You Fang, you have a question? Yeah, uh, so you know, like you show like the 13 sections. Are we going to work from like section 1 to 13 or are we working 13 to 1? Uh, another great question. Um, the the section system that they originally used, uh, I did not like it very much. Uh, if I'm going to share it again, my entire screen. Uh, all right, I think it's working. Um, if you were to look right here, I know it's, let's wait for this to clear up. So this area specifically is Rockefeller Park. And right here, uh, hopefully you can see my cursor, all this we consider Rockefeller Park, this area right here. And as you can see, it spans three different sections. And that means that if I were to send someone uh, a CAD drawing of Rockefeller Park, uh, I would have to send them three different files. And they would, they would have to you know, plan and uh, make their revisions and their layout uh, on three different files and then send that back to me. And obviously there's no need for that. So the way I envisioned these new drawings to work is that instead of these sections, uh, it's just one big layout of that specific park area, right? So I just send someone one file that says Rockefeller Park. Uh, these, like right here is where Stuyvesant High School is and a bunch of condos and a bunch of, uh, I think Goldman Sachs headquarters is right here. Um, obviously, uh, someone who's planning to shoot a movie in Rockefeller Park, uh, they don't need to worry about where the condos and buildings are uh, to the, uh, what is this, the east of uh, Battery Park. They're only concerned about the park area. So here's Rockefeller Park. Here's, for example, the uh, North Cove Marina. Um, this is all in Section 8, but some of it is cut off too. So instead of putting in two different sections, it's all just Rockefeller Park, it's just North Cove. Right here is South Cove, it's just South Cove. Right here is Wagner Park, just one file with Wagner Park. And um, that's the plan. Unless Codio has a, another idea. No, not at all. So we probably, uh, so we're going to start north from Rockefeller and from that work our way down. Now in terms of time, um, purpose sake, are we still going to continue with like we start work, um, working on Rockefeller and see where we leave off at towards the end of the year? Uh, yeah, I think I, I think one park you'll probably get done pretty quickly. So I'm thinking yeah. um, the main uh, locations we want to focus on right now is uh, Rockefeller Park, Wagner Park, North Cove Marina. And those are top three. And then we have the South Cove. Yeah, uh, Nydia, go ahead. Espinal Plaza, question, Cody. Oh, Espinal Plaza, too, um, yeah. There are so many students, and at first, when we first discussed it, we thought of, we, we, we talked about maybe um, assigning two students uh, per um, park yeah. or air, whatever. Um, I'm sure maybe more students can be applied. But is there any way possible of, even if you assign students in Rockefeller Park, um, there, there are other, other venues um, coming, coming south um, from Rockefeller Park, like Espinal Plaza, which is a volleyball court area, which is used um, for um, special events, bigger events. So that is considered like, for example, one of the main event areas as well. And it's in our plaza, there is a park called the Vidir Park. So um, is there any way of the students working on multiple um, areas at once instead of saying, okay, we're going to start with Rockefeller Park or yeah. mm -hmm. what have you, 
and then come down. Yeah, so that was the original plan in terms of, because I have about 14 captains and the different areas of the parks, like you mentioned, which was Rockefeller, then we have Marina Cove, uh north cove marina and then we have south cove marina but i believe there's four sections correct yeah so when i said north cove marina i was also including belvedere and esplanade plaza in the term north cove because okay. esplanade plaza and belvedere park they're they're the places that immediately surround the marina so the marina yeah. is the square and the on each side that's the south side is esplanade and then Esplanade Plaza and the north side is Belvedere Park. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. So it's mainly three sections then, in terms of you have um, Rockefeller, mm -hmm. and you have North Cove Marina, and then you have South Cove. Yeah. There's also other areas like um, right beside Wagner Park. There's an area called Pier A Plaza, which is a plaza in front of the uh, Pier A Harbor House Restaurant. That is also a popular uh, place we uh permit events um which is also a high priority for us but we acknowledge that there might be a time limitation so i think what we're what's going to happen is that um you know i think you and i are probably going to meet on site and we're going to determine okay you know this is the scope of the work and we can make that judgment at the moment okay do we have time to do more or are we going to be limited okay that's perfect Sorry, um, John, quick question. Uh, what year is the survey that you presented us with? Uh, for what year it is? Oh, it is, I can confirm right now. Uh, let's see. It's either 2015 or 2018. I can't remember. Oh, okay, so that's fairly recent, right? Um, and then we will, are we doing then the survey on site as well? Are we addition, doing that additionally? Well, the original plan was to have the students come on site and measure everything, but uh, the city is quite strict with COVID at the moment. Okay, so, so we're strictly relying on the survey presented just now, correct? Uh, no, we're, the survey that is in existence is kind of like the baseline, but mm -hmm. it's missing, I want to say, probably about 75 to 80% of the details of the park. So, okay. so it's outdated in a way. It, it's not outdated, it's just that the people that originally made it uh, decided that those details weren't relevant for the purposes of that survey. Gotcha. So gotcha. Place, things okay. like trees, benches, bike racks, signs, lampposts, art okay. installations on site, none of these are included on the site survey, and those are things that Kodio and his staff uh, that, that come to site, uh, mm -hmm. these are things that they have to measure out. These are things they have to document and communicate okay. to students. Like this is where these things are and they have to make it in their new revised drawing. Okay, so it's more about at the moment, starting off with creating a base drawing, right? And mm -hmm. then confirming, um, I guess, dimensions based off of the survey that we're doing on site. Yep. And adding yep. the new details. Okay, so the base drawing, Codio, we can develop it by maybe stitching the the 12 or the 13 different uh, drawings in yeah, Photoshop yeah. and then scale it in AutoCAD, right? Yeah. And then have a, you know, a team of two students trace over it and then we, we go to the site and, you know, start confirming things. Yeah, so it's yeah. A potential, potential pathway. Yeah, so once again, that's what John Sawyer mentioned. We just need to, we're gonna find out what, because every day some of the regulations are being lifted so I'm going to talk to Cornell tomorrow to see because they have some events. Um, PSAL are actually meeting up and after school programs are actually open up. So I'm going to see if anything has changed recently. So I really want the main thing is to have the kids, the students go out there and look at the site and with us. But I'll find out as soon as I get a chance. So hopefully before April 6th, things change and the students can actually go there because that's really one of the main experience of this whole process. Especially uh, if it's outdoors. Exactly, you know, right. so I'm going to talk to Cornell as well as the superintendent and see what can be done, especially because of this, how crucial is important that the students know as opposed to just to looking at image on Google. Right, and then we document existing conditions and then compare it with the base drawing that the students develop. Yep. Yeah, that's another thing too. Um, 
uh, in my meeting with our uh, chief operating officer regarding this project, uh, one of his concerns was that uh, another department of ours called uh, Real Property, uh, which manages construction uh, projects and manages the infrastructure of Battery Park, uh, they have, I think I mentioned earlier, they have like these highly technical uh, drawings with gas lines and, uh, you know, important infrastructure. And uh, he expressed to me that he wanted to make sure that uh, the drawings that the students create, that they don't have conflicting information with uh, the existing, you know, infrastructure drawings. So uh, part of this process will be, uh, um, communicate. we will communicate with our real property department to get these drawings and to, uh, to cross-reference and to double-check to make sure that you know everything is in line and everything is properly measured and displayed. Awesome. The last thing what we want to do is like create some internal confusion where someone downloads these drawings and then uh, it turns out some other drawings have something different and you know that's something we want to avoid. Okay, that sounds great. Um, are there any questions on the student side in terms of because uh, we're going to provide with more information once we do the site visits. And once again, we're going to try to see if um, most of you could actually be on the site that's going to be working on this project and as well as to be able to help out on this project when one person cannot help. Uh, how about you, John? Um, do I have any other questions? Ooh, it's a, I don't think so. Uh, Nidia, do you have any other questions? Uh, no, not for now, but we can always email each other. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Once again, uh, in that case, um, uh, look for, I'm going to finish filling out the form or email to you right now. Other than that, I look forward to the site visit and hopefully we could be able to have some students at the site. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that would be great. And we would meet you out on site as well, just so you know. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Take care. Guys. Great opportunity. We yeah. appreciate it. Thank you all for meeting. Appreciate all your time. Thanks. Take care. Okay. Okay.